Hey everyone, today's video is on the big picture, different types of mesh and the uses based on those different types. So before we talk about the different types of mesh, we should talk about what a mesh is, what it's used for, and um, what properties we might want in a mesh. So at its most fundamental level, mesh is a material used to buttress weak points in the human body. Now in general surgery, which uh, is probably the field that uses mesh the most, uh, the most common use of mesh is to repair hernias. And hernias are just a weakness in the fascia, um, most commonly the abdominal fascia. So if this is the fascia layer of your abdomen, it's meant to keep your, all your organs uh, and intestines inside and well protected. Uh, if you get a weak spot there, you can end up getting a hole in that fascia. And that hole is what's called, called a hernia. And once you have one of these holes, you can get herniation of contents uh, out where they're not supposed to be. So most commonly, this is just fat. Um, that usually doesn't cause too many problems except for pain and discomfort. Uh, but you can also get issues where actually bowel or other er organs herniate out through. And if that's the case, then bowel can get obstructed. You can get bowel obstructions from hernias, which of course can make people quite ill. You can get that bowel strangulated where the blood flow gets cut off and the bowel dies. That also can make patients very ill and have very serious complications. Um, and so really the risk of very serious complications and then quality of life uh, means that we need a good solution to fix these hernias. So you might imagine that the best material to fix this would be something that's permanent, something that is able to add strength to this uh, weak spot in the abdominal wall and stay there for a long period of time. Uh, you'd be correct, if, but the other feature you have to think about is that this is now a permanent um, foreign body. And anytime we have foreign bodies in the human body, you have to worry about infection risk. Uh, so that's something that needs to be con considered as well, especially when, like I described before, a lot of times when you need uh, to fix these hernias, they're occurring in potentially contaminated fields. All right, so the three major classes of mesh, one is synthetic. This is the most common. Um, you could also call this maybe permanent synthetic. This is, mesh is a uh, uh, synthetic tissue, usually, usually some type of plastic that's been uh, synthesized uh, as a permanent piece of tissue that you place um, at the location of the hernia that theoretically just lasts indefinitely in the body. A biologic mesh, on the other hand, actually comes from a biologic tissue source, uh, sometimes pigs, sometimes cows, etc. Um, and this tissue will degrade over time. The idea is that hopefully the body Kind of grows into this mesh and um, you fix the underlying hernia um, even though that this tissue will eventually go away and actually that's the advantage of biologics is that if you place this in for example a contaminated field it gets infected it's usually just going to go away it's not going to cause these problems with a permanently infected uh, foreign body um, and then synthetic absorbable mesh this is again another synthetic mesh uh, but it's kind of the industry response to biologic mesh where um, it has the property of, although it's a synthetic material, it will get absorbed over time in the body. And therefore it has the advantages of a biologic mesh if we're talking about a potentially contaminated field. So to dive a little bit deeper, let's talk about the most common mesh, uh, the synthetic meshes. Those can be made out of uh, several materials. Probably most common are these materials I have listed here. Uh, polypropylene, polyester, and EPTFE, uh, which if you care stands for expanded polytetrafluoroethylene. Um, I would say the most common are polypropylene and polyester. Uh, polypropylene, if you think back to our suture video, this is the same material that's used in the permanent sutures, the proline sutures. Um, and then polyester, uh, you've probably heard of this in some of your clothing. So see, these are both um, permanent synthetic materials. Um, they're both pliable, they're both easy to handle. Um, some differences between the two is that um, the polyester has probably a little bit less uh, shrinkage or contraction, but it does have more of an inflammatory response. So sometimes it can be tough to uh, take out of tissues if you would ever have to. Uh, but either, either way, the polypropylene polyester mesh, um, these are both first line mesh um, options. Very common, very commonly used, very safe, uh, good results. Uh, the EPTFE, this is kind of the original mesh material. Um, it's actually completely biologically inert, which you might think of as an advantage. But actually, remember, we want these tissues to get well incorporated into the body tissues over time, one that uh, makes the abdominal wall more normal. It's, it's 
involves more of your tissues as opposed to just being held together by mesh. But the better that mesh is ingrown into the tissues, uh, the less likely infection is down the line. So if something like the PTFE mesh does get infected, um, it absolutely is going to have to be explanted. There's no chance of uh, saving that mesh. And the final major type of synthetic mesh is a composite mesh. And that has one of these two materials, most commonly polypropylene, and then a second layer that is absorbable and non-inherent. So for example, um, if you have a hernia, let's say this is a ventral hernia, you've got bowel, you've got all your organs in here, your skin out here, you want to place a piece of mesh that's going to get well incorporated into the tissues, but you also don't want the bowel to stick to it um, because of course there's risk of forming adhesions there, potentially endocutaneous fistulas, et cetera. You don't, want, you don't ever want your bowel to be um, directly uh, opposing mesh. And so these two layer meshes will have a layer of polypropylene or polyester that sits up here against the abdominal wall and gets well incorporated into that tissue. And then we'll have a protective layer underneath it that repels the bowel. And what's interesting is your body actually covers this mesh uh, with a layer of peritoneum over the time. So as this absorbable layer goes away, this mesh gets actually protected by peritoneum and is not going to interact with the bowel. And so those composite mes meshes are big in things like laparoscopic surgery, IPOMS um, is the name for that, intraperitoneal onlay mesh. Um, and those are a major use of meshes nowadays and is another example of a synthetic mesh. And then there's also a couple qualities that you'll hear when people are discussing synthetic mesh. Um, one is the porosity. Uh, you can have macro porous mesh, which you can imagine if you're thinking about a woven material, these pores are kind of the space between where things are woven together. And so a macro porous mesh, I underlined the uh, most common uses in each of these categories. The macro porous mesh is generally better uh, because macro, more space for tissue ingrowth. Uh, micro has a little bit less tissue ingrowth, probably some more infection risk, um, worse incorporation into the tissues long term. And then when you talk about weight, uh, this is pretty straightforward. It's basically just how heavy duty uh, the mesh is. And here we typically favor a midweight mesh. Uh, obviously, you want something that's strong enough where it's not going to fail, um, especially fail centrally where the mesh is you know, just supported by the strength of itself. Um, so a lightweight mesh is often a little bit too light, too high a risk of failure. A heavyweight mesh can be problematic because um, sometimes it's just too robust of a piece of tissue. Uh, people can feel it. Potentially, it's more noticeable. It might have a role um, if you're bridging a defect without much support or muscular layer uh, or in very strong patients that you know are going to lift heavy after their hernia repair. But in general, um, if you're just guessing or probably the default for these um, would be a macroporous midweight mesh. That's probably the most common. But if you hear these terms thrown away around, now you'll have a general sense of what people are talking about. All right, so we've covered in great detail synthetic mesh. Uh, like I said, those are the most commonly used. Next, we'll talk about the biologic meshes. These are probably the least commonly used mesh. Um, like I said, they're based on the biological tissue matrix. So you actually take a tissue, for example, dermis, uh, submucosa from the intestines, pericardium, and you treat this in such a way that you eat away all the potentially immunogenic tissues, basically everything except that underlying tissue matrix. As you can imagine, that's not really an easy process. And to do that safely and sterilely uh, requires a lot of money. Um, one of my previous attendings used to say, think of a biologic mesh as buying a car. If you get a biologic mesh of any size at all, you're thinking like $20,000. Whereas the synthetic meshes that we were talking about before might be more like $100. Um, the main reasons that you would use something that's so expensive uh, compared to some other tissues is that this is absorbable. And the advantage, like we talked about a bit earlier, is that if you're in a dirty case or a case where you feel like there's really a risk of contamination of the mesh, uh, they might be less likely to get infected. Of course, they still can get infected. Uh, but the advantage is that if they are infected, you could potentially, one, treat through it, or two, just wait it out until the mesh actually gets um, resorbed back into the body. Uh, so the main advantage that people will quote for biologic meshes are those dirty cases or high risk of contamination.
something you might hear about with biologic mesh is this idea of having a cross-linked mesh. Um, cross-linkage just actually prevents tissue ingrowth. So most of the time you'll be using non-cross-linked biologic mesh. All right, and then our final type is this synthetic absorbable mesh. Um, so like I said, this is an industry response to the biologic mesh. It's synthetically created, but it is also absorbable. So uh, you can make the argument for using it in a contaminated case, just the way you would use a biologic mesh. Uh, it's still much cheaper th than uh, biologic meshes, although more expensive than um, the permanent synthetics. You're thinking maybe two, three, up to maybe nine, ten thousand $10,000, depending on the brand. Um, but again, that's still a significant uh, cost savings compared to the biologics that we talked about before. Some example names of this would be things like BioA or Phasix Mesh. Vicryl is another example. Again, this is a mesh essentially made out of that suture material. It's kind of in its own category because these meshes last quite a bit longer, maybe 12 months to a year. Vicryl maybe lasts like four to six weeks. Uh, it's really just meant to get you out of that situation that you're in with no expectation um, that that mesh repair is going to hold up long term over time. Whereas these other meshes, you could maybe uh, try to do a uh, more permanent repair with. So that's the synthetic absorbable. Some people would probably argue that these make biologic meshes uh, obsolete. Um, I'm certainly no hernia expert and shouldn't be telling anyone what to do when it comes to mesh selection. But there are hernia experts uh, like Dr. Rosen um, that are actively investigating this topic. I thought this was an interesting article that pointed out that uh, multi-center RCT, uh, they followed patients for two years and found that biologic meshes had a 20% recurrence rate compared to only a 5% uh, for synthetic. Um, other complications, including infections, were similar, and the biologic meshes cost uh, 200x more. Anyway, so to review, we have our three types of mesh. We have synthetic. Remember, this is the most common. Um, used appropriately in almost any situation, um, even like we saw with that last paper, potentially even the contaminated fields. Uh, you have your biologic mesh. These are uh, from biologic tissues. They're much more expensive, uh, but they are potentially uh, safer choice in dirty fields. And then you have your synthetic absorbables that are synthetically made, um, but absorbable similar to the biologics. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So remember your synthetic meshes, uh, they can be um, polypropylene, polyester, those are your most common. Uh, they can also be composite with some other tissues to help protect the bowel. Um, and of course, you can get macro or microporous, heavy, mid or lightweight, but the most common is probably a midweight microporous mesh. Uh, the biologics and synthetic absorbables are, again, most their claim to fame is um, in infectious risk fields, uh, but they do have higher recurrence rates than the synthetic, more permanent meshes. All right, so that's it. These videos are for educational purposes only. This is not clinical advice. Do not use to diagnose or treat any disease. We'll see you next time.